join with us. We're going to praise and worship our King together. Here we go. As I reflect from perspective, there in the best and worst days of His life. He was always on my side. You're in the pain, you're in the promise, in the the days the furnace finds my faith. You're the fourth within the flame. I don't need to know what the future says, as if the past could talk and would tell me this. My God!
if you believe that the name of Jesus is higher, is greater, if our hope is in Jesus, why don't you begin to praise Him right where you are? Why don't you begin to thank the Lord for His goodness, for His grace, for His kindness. We thank You, Lord Jesus. We praise You. We proclaim You a King. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You are the name that is above every other name. In Jesus' name and Your church says together, Amen, Amen. Amen. Well, a huge welcome to Sunday Night Church. It is so wonderful for you to join us tonight. And we're gonna pray because we always take time to pray in our church. And so tonight we're praying with Andrew. He's praying for his scholarship application to be approved and for God to surround him with a supportive community. We're praying for Melissa, praying for guidance as she gives counsel and comfort to her sister. So we're gonna pray that she has wisdom. We're praying for Barbara, praying for her siblings and her daughter's salvation. We're praying for Noah, uh, for the approval of his application uh, for permanent residency, a hope in Australia. Uh, we're praying for Sochi, praying for freedom from depression. We're gonna pray for you, uh, Sochi. So why don't we, um, why don't we um, combine our faith and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank You that we can call upon Your Name. Lord, I thank You that we can hope in You, that we can trust in You. And I pray for every need, every request, we lift it up to You and I pray that You you would have Your perfect way, that Your will would be done in Jesus' Name on earth as it is in heaven. We love You, Lord Jesus, and we thank You in advance for the miracles, for Your provision, uh, and may Your glory be revealed in Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen. Yeah, come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Whether you're in a watch party or whether you're watching this by yourself here in Australia or around the globe, whether you're watching it now or a bit later on, you are in for a treat tonight because we have Pastor Judah Smith bringing the Word He's a favourite. Later on. He's a favourite. He's a favourite. Yes. So loved in our church. So listen, it's not too late to send the link out to your friends. Invite them to church. And uh, I know in some parts of Australia, at least, people are starting to watch church together and watch parties or hub parties or maybe just parties in general. <laughs> but uh, it's awesome that yes. people are uh, connecting and big warm welcome to the chat. And this chat is lighting up in front of me here. Yes. And I mean, I can see Amber Davis there saying amen and Rachel uh, saying, Mario, we're praying for you. I love that. People are usually talking to each other on the chats too, cool. praying for each other. But hey, as always, we've got praise reports here and so many different praise reports. But look, just to name some, uh, someone's praising God that over this past week, they've paid off their home loan. Woo! You'd be praising God as yes. well. Well done. That's awesome. Someone's praising God for their health uh, uh, in both her throat and stomach. Uh, scans have come back all clear. Someone's thanking God that um, uh, work has become available in their field of expertise as well, which is pretty cool. It's actually really cool to hear people, uh, you know, gaining work opportunities and seeing careers move forward in a time such as a pandemic. And I love praise reports like that. But someone here is thanking God for, uh, that they're continuing continuing to be with their family as his mum prepares for further cancer treatment. Uh, it's been breakthrough and things are moving forward, which is which is awesome. So our hearts are with you, Christopher, and uh, praying for you, okay? So uh, Jinky is praising God that their daughter's um, f disability funding has been approved as well. So that's awesome. But those are some of the praise reports. Uh, it's praise reports because here in Australia, we're in summer season. Yes, we are. And, uh, it's a little bit sweaty, actually. It's a little bit sweaty. It's a little muggy bit muggy over here. A bit muggy, but yeah. also it means here as well and around the globe, Christmas <gasps> is around it's the corner. It's on its way. I feel it. Do you feel it in the air? I, I definitely you, feel it. Have you got yeah. the Christmas spirit yet? I, I definitely do. Yes. Sigh. Do you know what? Okay, I just need to share this little wow, family shut me down. family That's moment cool. for, for just for a second. Yeah. This year, I want to go a real Christmas tree. And I'm trying to convince this guy, but what do you think? Put it in the chat. Can we do a poll in the chat? Can we do that? No, no. No, we can't do that. Okay. No, Laura, we have to <laughs> save the trees. Save the trees, so. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Speaking okay. of Christmas though, <laughs> speaking of Christmas, we have incredible plans this Christmas season. Uh, the Christmas Spectacular Online yes. is gonna be amazing. 
And also, I, do you know what I love that we do as a church every year is the kilo of Christmas. Yeah. And um and you know traditionally what we would do is we would fill bags and bring them to church, but because we're not gathering this year, uh, it's all online. Kilo of Christmas online, and so uh, you can find that Hillsong.com.au/slash kilo, and right there you can um, you can put toys. Uh, unperishable foods. You can do all the things and we'll make sure that they get delivered to people in need this Christmas, which I love that we get to do that. If there's anything that goes together, it's Christmas and <laughs> kilos, I tell you what. So, uh... Slow Where's clap. The drum, ba -ba? Slow clap. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> But no, it is a special time. And you know, here at Hillsong Church, we always make the special time special. And this Christmas spectacular, look, I've had a little bit of a sneak peek. I've talked to Cass Langton for myself. Th this is like spectacular at a whole nother, whole nother level. level. Yeah. Let me tell you right now, like I'm not gonna watch this on my laptop. Like I'm gonna be turning the subwoofers up. We're I'm thinking. gonna get a plasma screen. The subwoofers? Is it called a subwoofer? What's it? Everyone's laughing at me. <laughs> this is great. Uh, wow. Okay, moving along. Laura, we should let people know real quick before we move on yeah. about Sisterhood United Night. Sisterhood yes. United Night is coming up on Thursday, the 3rd of December with Roberta Lee Houston, Mother Dove, Bobby Houston, my mother. And I'm so excited. Where you can, we're encouraging people to gather um, in homes, in living rooms, and uh, it's going to be a beautiful night over cheese platters or desserts. I don't know, I'm just putting ideas out there, but it's gonna be amazing. No, it is, yeah. it is. But hey, we love that you're here at church and uh, we're gathering and uh, it's awesome. And uh, look, I can't see everyone in the chat, but this particular chat here is going off and going people off. are saying they're just so glad they're to They're saying be yes to the tree, yes to the tree. Yes, but yes anyway. to the tree. But uh, listen, I, th I think that's pretty much when it comes to just housekeeping stuff, knowing what's going on. There's always something going on in church life, but you know, we're gonna uh, continue our, our worship and a big part of our worship is our giving. And we wanna give every person an opportunity to really put God first when it comes to their finances. And you know, obviously we are in a uh, pandemic very much still and what that represents for so many people, families, households, marriages, businessmen, businesswomen, what it means right now, the reality for you is things have changed, things are different. But I love that, you know, that our church has always been built on people who have always been generous. People who've always understood the principle of putting God first when it comes to their tithes and when it comes to their offering. And we're just so thankful and we can't thank you enough as a church just for continuing to stand, continuing to put God first. Because you know what? It allows, no doubt, the, the work of God, the work of the church to keep moving forward. I mean, this week I was talking to a pastor who uh, got to be in the hospital with some of our uh, families. And, you know, I don't know if they were actually in the room because I thought there was restrictions, but they got to pastor a family through a situation and it allows our uh, young people to still be reached in high schools. It allows uh, families to still be reached. The work of the Lord must continue to still go forward. And we're just so thankful to people who decide to put God first in their life. And don't forget that the principle is that as well, when you put God first, it releases something in your life. And I just wanna remind you of Isaiah 32 verse eight. It says this, but the noble make noble plans and by noble deeds they stand. You know, generosity, putting God first, there's a stance to it. It has a stance and regardless of the wind and the waves, regardless of the changing seasons around us, we're gonna be the people of God that choose to stand no matter what. And I wanna encourage you to continue to put God first when it comes to your tithes and your offering. Hey, uh, as you're considering your part, as you're preparing, we have a short little clip just to help you with the ways you can give. Check it out and we'll come back and we'll pray for you. Giving online is quick, easy and secure. Here's how. Go to hillsong.com forward slash give or click the give donate button if you're joining us on Hillsong Church Online. Enter your tithe amount and your phone number or email address. If it's your first time, we will send you a verification code. You can also activate recurring giving by ticking the box. Enter your card details and you're done. Thank you for investing into the lives of others. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for people, families, 
Lord, marriages and individuals who choose to put You first. Father, I pray that You would continue to bless them. Pour out such a blessing over their life, God. In Jesus' Name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, 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 I've just been corrected, by the way, while that video is playing. It's not a subwoofer, it's a subwoofer, okay? So, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I also haven't heard subwoofer used since like the year 2000. Yeah, that's, that's true. Okay. <laughs> that's Anyways, right. Laura, <laughs> yes. we're about to get into the Word. It is the main moment. Lovely. And yeah. w- before we get into it, I want to encourage anyone who's on Facebook, oh, YouTube, yes. or on the Hillsong platform, get ready. Ready, you got to send the link out. We've, it's going to be an amazing night together with Judah Smith. Yeah. But Lozzy, why don't you... Pastor this? Judah Smith is a, like was such a close friend to our church and he's just a powerful communicator of God's Word. You will be laughing one moment and in tears the next, but most importantly, so stirred towards the things of God. And I love his heart. He's so generous and, um, and we're just so grateful that he is in our world. And so tonight, where, wherever you are, uh, why don't you give a huge welcome to the one and only Judah Smith as he speaks to us tonight. Hillsong Church, Hillsong Church, Australia. I love you. Happy Sunday or Wednesday or Saturday or whatever day it is that you're watching this. Happy weekend. I love you so much, Hillsong Church. I love you, Pastors Brian and Bobby. And it is a privilege to preach a sermon to Church Home and the Hillsong Church, Australia. And so a big hello. And I cannot wait um, to visit Sydney again and the wonderful country of Australia. You are a Amazing. This installment of the series we're doing, What a Wonderful World, is called The Wonder of Rest. All right, everybody kind of slow down for a second. Let's just enjoy the title, for goodness sake. Let's just enjoy rest. I want to talk to you about the wonder of rest. And I'm going to conclude this sermon by telling you what happens when we take time to rest, or more specifically, in addition, what do we do when we're taking margin and time to rest? So let's jump into one of the great Psalms or songs ever written, Psalms 121, Psalms 121 in verse one, it says this, let's jump in together. I look up to the mountains. Does my strength come from the mountains? No, my strength comes from God who made heaven and earth and mountains. He won't let you stumble. Your guardian God won't fall asleep. Not on your life. Israel's guardian will never doze and never sleep. God's your guardian right at your side to protect you. Shielding you from sunstroke, sheltering you from moonstroke. God guards you from every evil. He guards your very life. He guards you when you leave and when you return. He guards you right now. He guards you always. He guards you right now. He guards you always. You know, that wouldn't be uh, a bad sermon in and of itself right there. Just leave it right there. That wouldn't be a bad thing to, if you get nothing else out of this sermon and out of these minutes and moments we're sharing, just get this. He guards you right now and he guards you always. God guards you right now, and He guards you always. The wonder of rest. Will you join me in prayer? God, thank you for the minutes and moments we share. Thank you for what you're doing in church home all over the world. Thank you for what you're doing at Hillsong Church all over the world. Lord, as I speak to our church anchored in the United States of America, as I speak to Hillsong Church anchored in Australia, Thank you, you're going to meet each and every one of us right where we are. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Have you ever had a concussion? That's kind of an odd thing to start a sermon with. I know, I know, I know. But have you ever had a concussion? I've had several. Now, some of you are thinking that explains a lot about Judah. He's had several concussions. That must be his problem. Fair enough, Fair enough. But I actually have had several concussions playing football, playing basketball. This is going to be shocking news. Do you know I got a concussion playing golf? 
True story. I might be the only guy you ever meet in your whole life who got a concussion playing golf. And here's how I was on the green and one of my playing partners was about a hundred yards away, hit a sand wedge, a pitching wedge, and it literally landed on my head. I, I've gotten a concussion uh, in a number of different ways. I've gotten a concussion uh, while on ice. I've gotten a concussion while golfing. I've gotten a concussion after a basketball game and I've gotten a concussion in a football game. Now, my worst concussion I ever got, you're like, Judah, I don't know if we care about the worst concussion you've ever got. Okay, but I'm just going to share it with you. Anyways, the worst concussion I ever got was after after a basketball game about my sophomore year of high school, and I went to jump up and grab the rim, the 10-foot rim on a basketball hoop, and I swung. My momentum carried me. My feet swung up, and I slipped off the rim, and uh, from about 10 feet high, I fell directly on my head. Uh, the game that we played was about two hours from our house. And so uh, a friend of mine, a, a teammate's dad drove me home back to my house. God love him. For two hours, I asked the same question over and over and over. I couldn't remember. Now that night, I had a really interesting experience. A, a nurse and a doctor came over to our house with my mom and dad and expressed that uh, I was not going to be, a, be allowed that night to sleep through the entire night for fear of slipping into a, co a coma because the concussion was so severe. So what happened on that particular night is every hour on the hour, I was awakened by a nurse, a nurse who was a wonderful lady from our church who was willing to stay at our house all night and watch over me to make sure I didn't slip into a coma. I'll never forget the flashlight at uh, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., midnight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I finally got up at about 8 a.m., but every hour on the hour, a sweet, wonderful nurse named Glenda would take a flashlight and flash it directly in my eyeballs to look at my pupils to see whether or not they're dilated. Never forget the feeling of just like so groggy and so disoriented and here's this flashlight in my face. And yet in the midst of it all, there was a, a, a sensation that I was being taken care of, a sensation that I was being watched over. I remember having the thought that it's pretty amazing that while I sleep, this wonderful, sweet, older lady from our church is willing to watch over me. She's going to stay up. She's not going to sleep. So I can. And that brings us to the subject of rest. Do you know while you rest, while you sleep, while you experience margin in your life, God does not. He continues to work. That's the wonder of it all. While you sleep, God works. While you rest, God works. While you relinquish control, God works. While you hand things over to God and do nothing, he does everything. Here's the wonder of rest. Rest is a form of worship. It is a gift given to us and instituted by God himself so that while we do essentially nothing, air quotes, God does everything. It's a reboot of sorts. It's a recalling. It's a remembering. It's a rehearsing. It is a recalibration of bringing you back to the place of recognizing who you are and who God is. Is. There is so much wonder in the practice of rest. Now, anytime we talk about the subject of rest, anytime a preacher or a pastor or a leader like me introduces a subject of rest, almost certain there's an old ancient Hebrew word or term that we always seem to run into. And by now, I'm sure it's already popped into your head. If you're new to church, new to faith, new to this experience, you're watching this on the church home app or you're watching this at, uh, through Hillsong and you're wondering, OK, I don't know much about Jesus. I don't know much about God. By the way, we are so glad you're here and we're so glad you're watching. And I promise you, this is going to be a wonderful few minutes where you'll have an opportunity to peer into what it potentially and possibly could look like if you did put your trust in Jesus and you did start following Jesus. This is a wonderful 
wonderful moment in a few minutes for you to experience and peer into what it would look like. But I want you to know one of the central practices to those of us that worship and follow Jesus, endeavor to live, love and look like Jesus is resting. I mean, we'll talk about this word Sabbath here in a moment, and I'm sure you are already thinking this old ancient Hebrew word and term Sabbath. But before we do, can we just call out the obvious? And I don't mean to insult anyone's intelligence here, but look at the way God made life. No, seriously, we actually turn off approximately every 24 hours. Think about it. We literally turn off. We, we go away. We need eight, 10, something like, I don't need six hours. Okay. And, and these individuals who try to convince all of us they'll need four to six hours, I don't know about. Okay. But for the rest of us, we need probably about eight hours, maybe more like 10 hours where we turn off our brain heals, our body heals, and we literally go to sleep. Now think about it. God could have made us anyway and in any orientation, in any setup, in any context. He could have made us go on and on and on and on forever like the Energizer Bunny. On and on and on and on. Never sleeping, never stopping, but the sleeping and the stopping. Some of you are thinking, I'm not good at rest. And yet I bet you still sleep on a regular basis. So actually, you're probably better at rest than you think you are. God made us, necessitated us to turn off. And I say turn off more than rest because turn off is so literal and hopefully gives you a word picture of what we're actually supposed to do on a regular basis. Now, turn off is a good term in the technological age. We're supposed to put our phones away. We're supposed to put the flat screens away. We're supposed to put the images away, the stories away, the music away. And we need to get still. We need to get margin. We need rest. We need to reflect. Like I said, you say rest in church and almost certainly somebody will say, I practice the Sabbath. I'm passionate about the Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath is a act of worship instituted by God amongst the nation he created, the nation called Israel and the people in that nation, the Jewish people. To this day, amongst the Jewish people, the Sabbath is acknowledged and practiced, in some cases, vehemently and diligently. Now, the Sabbath was instituted by God. And when you look at what we now call the Old Testament, it was something that was done, like I said, with incredible passion, incredible tension, intentionality. And there were many rules and regulations that went with the Sabbath. Sufficient to say that from Friday evening to Saturday evening, the Jewish people, God's chosen people, the nation got instituted, created, innovated so that he could display to the world his his compassion, his mercy, his love, his care, his concern, his favor. He he built this nation and unique among all nations. He said, my people, my nation will do nothing for a 24 hour period. And yet this nation will prosper and be blessed while all other nations work for seven days. My people will only work six days. And what God will do with them in six days will far surpass what man can do on his own in seven days. It was the Sabbath, quite literally, a day of rest. Now, Jesus has come and he has fulfilled the Old Testament. He has fulfilled all the rules and regulations. At one point, there was more than 600 rules that the Jewish people were trying to uphold and it was impossible. We all fall short of God's standard, God's rules, God's covenants, God's regulations. We cannot keep them. We err, we sin, we're selfish, we're self-serving and we needed a hero, we needed a redeemer, we needed a savior, we needed a superhero and that person sin is Jesus and he did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so now Jesus is the fulfillment of all the rules. He's the fulfillment of all the Old Testament. He's the fulfillment of the nation of Israel. He is the fulfillment of all things that God gave us in the New Testament as a type and a symbol and a picture and a portrait. It all culminates in the person of Jesus and even the Sabbath. To be very specific, 
In Mark chapter 2 and verse 27, Jesus says this about the Sabbath. The Sabbath has now changed and yet rest as an act of worship is just as relevant and needed as ever before. But Jesus said this when critiqued by the Jewish people for not practicing the Sabbath in a religious way, in a ritualistic way, in a rigid way, Jesus says this about the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made to serve us. We were not made to serve the Sabbath. Mark chapter two and verse 27. We were made, excuse me, the Sabbath was made to serve us. We were not made to serve the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is there. It remains. This idea of a Sabbath day or a day, a singular day of rest, a 24 hour period of rest is still in play. Now, if you don't do it, it's not sin. It's not air. It's not wrong. It's simply missing an opportunity. It's like God's financial plan for your giving and generosity. There are actual tools. There are actual opportunities. You can give the 10 percent of your income. You can give what is called the tithe. Matthew 23, 23, New Testament. Jesus said, yes, you should tithe, but don't leave the more important things undone, like justice and love and mercy, right? It's the tithe that funds justice. We can't have justice without resource to institute justice, not only in the United States of America, but around the world. Tithing to not tithe is not to fall into sin. It's just simply missing an opportunity made available to us by Jesus. And so it is With the Sabbath, you can actually have a day of rest. And here's what's so wonderful about a day of rest. By the way, this day doesn't have to be Sunday, doesn't have to be Monday, doesn't have to be Friday evening to Saturday evening, which is what the Jews practice and many still do. It can be any day, any time. You can have Sabbath rest every single day. But the idea behind the Sabbath is preparation ahead of time. So when you enter into Sabbath, you can focus almost exclusively on God or more specifically on God And those incredible close proximity relationships that God has given you. But preparation must be made. Oh, there's a thing called spontaneity and rest and margin. But the Sabbath speaks of this preparation we make to provide for us an environment of true rest or truly turning off. So I simply want to suggest that this sermon is not dedicated to a rigid, ritualistic, religious formality called the Sabbath, what we're all held to and we have to. And if we don't, we're guilty or we're ashamed or we're fearful or we're fearful or we're worried because something bad might happen if we don't practice the Sabbath. But I want to say this. If you want to increase your worship, if you want to grow in worship, if you want to grow in God awareness, if you want to grow in just being deeply conscious of God, Practicing preparation for margin and rest is an incredible way to do that. For Sabbath is an act of worship. It's an act of worship. Now, we read a moment ago from Psalms 121. Psalms 121 says, God does not sleep. God does not slumber. We do. We need to. We have to go to sleep. We have to turn off. But it makes it very clear to me in Psalms 121 that what is so wonderful about Psalms 121, what is so majestic, what is so beautiful, what is so stunning, what is so overwhelming is that while we sleep and rest, he does not Sabbath is the hours and minutes and moments that we set aside to say, God, I'm not doing anything, but you are. You are. I've often said this, that waking up in the morning is one of the great worship moments of our existence. Waking up in the morning when you open your eyes and you rub out those sleepy stuff from your eyes. Some people call them eye boogers. And I'm like, I don't like that term. It's kind of gross to me. But if you take the sleep out of your eyes, as we call it, and you open your eyes, that should be a moment where you go, wow, the world is still turning. Things are still working. And I've been turned off. And now that I'm awake, facing another day, may the beginning of this day be another overt and obvious reminder 
that he, not me, holds the world in his hands. He's in charge. He's in control. Are you weary? Are you exhausted? Are you fatigued? Are you frustrated? Have things gotten blown out of proportion in your life? Has COVID got you to a place? Are you home more than you've ever been and yet more restless than you've ever been? I think one of the things that we're facing right now in COVID is oftentimes we all went to work just hoping, begging and praying and within our own conscience and our own self thinking, I got to get home. I got to get on the couch. I want to watch a movie. I can't wait to be home. I can't wait to rest. I can't wait to relax. And now our wildest wishes are true. All we are is home, 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 couch, 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 Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. And we're wondering to ourselves, why am I not more energized? Why don't I have more energy? Why am I still tired? I'm home a lot. All I do is Zoom calls. Why do I not have more rest? Because what we're talking about is not merely watching a show or taking a nap. We're talking about an act of worship that will energize you and strengthen you, not just in your physical body, but in your soul, where your decision-making mechanism is, where your thought processes live. God there wants to give you space and clarity and margin and ease and strength and fortitude and courage. Scripture says, God says, I give my beloved sweet sleep. That is more than just shutting your eyes and getting rest. That is something deep in your soul. So here's what I want to suggest, church. Here's what I want to suggest to you. If you are weary, if you are worn out, worn out, if you do feel overextended, overexposed, weary, fatigued, agitated, frustrated, easily annoyed, finding yourself critical towards others, finding yourself harboring unforgiveness, finding yourself giving yourself over to gossip, resentment, blame shifting, envy, jealousy, strife, worry, anxiety, let me write you a prescription. Could I do that? Let me write you a pastoral prescription. You know what you need? You need Sabbath. You need rest. And it's wonderful. While we rest, he works. There are many of you watching this and what's ahead of you is an enormous amount of work. What's ahead of you is saving your business. What's ahead of you is saving your job. What's ahead of you is saving a marriage, saving your children, saving a friendship, saving your reputation. And so instinctively you tell yourself, I need to work and I need to work hard and that may very well be true, but not fully, not completely. You don't just need to work. You need to worship. Worship may be your greatest work, if it even is. It's worship. It's rest. So, I want to give you three things in conclusion, and I'm done. Music's playing softly. I'm coming to a close. I want to give you three things that happen and three things you ought to do during your Sabbath. Here's what I'm suggesting. Here's my pastoral prescription. You set aside a day for Chelsea and I, it's Friday. We actually are now calling Friday Sabbath. And when I call Friday Sabbath, I don't mean Old Testament, ritual, rigid, I have to, I feel guilty or bad or sad if I don't. No, 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 the, the Sabbath, I'm not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath is made for me. The Sabbath is to serve me. The Sabbath is to help me. 
but I'm going to stick to it. Because I don't just need to work. I need to worship. I want to say this. Actually, you know what? I'll save that for the conclusion. Let me share with you three things that happens. Three things during this day of rest that you're going to have. Judah, I can't do a day of rest. I, I work every day of the week. Can you do a night of rest? Can you do a lunch break of rest? Can you do a morning of rest? Can you find, can you prepare ahead of time? Can you look at your schedule? So Judah, I don't have a predictable schedule. It can't be every Friday. Well, the sa- your Sabbath can move every week to a different day, different time, different space, different place, but just prepare it as an act of worship to God. And here's the simplest posture. God, thank you. While I rest, you work. You are my guardian. And you do not sleep and you do not doze off. While I sleep and doze off, while I rest and relax, you work. And you work all things together to bring good into my life. Three things that happen during the Sabbath. There's a waiting, there's a watching, and there's a washing. There's a waiting that happens. There's a watching that happens. And there's a washing that happens. And maybe you're listening to this and you're like, Judah, great. So so what do I do? Do I just watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Do I just watch reruns of Friends? Do I just watch The Office? What do I do during this day of rest? Do I just get out the gummy bears and the popcorn and just kind of enjoy myself and watch my favorite movies? What, what, what are you suggesting? I'm so glad you asked. In my pastoral prescription for your Sabbath rest, here's the three things you ought to practice during this margin period that you're going to prepare and build into your schedule. Number one, waiting. What is waiting? Waiting is remembering and relying. Remembering and relying. See, this margin that you're going to build in is going to build in waiting. Wait on the Lord, the Bible says, and you will renew your strength. Wait. The word wait is not a stagnant term. It's an active posture. And it means to rehearse, first of all, and recall. Start to rehearse and revisit all the things God has done in your life. You can start there. You can write them down. You can sing them out. You can say them to a friend. Whatever this context, this margin is, get other people who are committed. If you want to have your Sabbath day with others or with friends and start the remembering practice. And here's what the remembering is for. It's to remind you of who God is and what he's already done, which will produce in you a reliance, a relinquishing. It is the posture and practice of saying God's track record is true and it won't change with me. His reputation, his track record, his his renown, His record is perfect. So I can trust him with my life. I can trust him with the rest of my week. I can trust him with the rest of my weeks. I can trust him with the rest of my months. I can trust him with the rest of my years. I can trust him for the rest of my life. Once a week, prepare yourself to wait. Don't make decisions. Don't even make plans. Just remember and rely. Rely and remember. Remember and rely. And the waiting leads to watching. All of this is an active posture. Rest is an active posture. Rest is an act of worship. Now we watch. What is watch? Watch is open up your eyes. Consider the lilies of the valley. Consider the fish in the sea. Consider the trees and the mountains, the flowers on the plains, the giraffes in the desert, the sharks in the ocean, and just gain perspective. 
I don't know, look at the stars. My father-in-law just got an app and he was showing it to me, Chelsea's dad. And if you hold it up to the, the sky, it tells you all the constellations and the stars. And we just were mesmerized at the universe's unknown, the solar systems we know so little about. If we know more about space than we do the ocean, plumb the depths, if you will. Consider the vast seas and oceans and lakes and rivers, their majesty, their beauty, their rhythm, and gain perspective. When you find your placement in the universe, when you find your placement in the earth, when you get sober-minded again and not inebriated by your problems and your stresses and your anxieties, have you ever been drunk with worry? Drunk with fear? You know where that comes from. We get inebriated by digesting and intaking all of our drama, difficulties, and challenges, and we just get drunk during the week. And I am not speaking about alcohol. I'm speaking about all the problems in the world and everything in our, what's, what am I gonna do? And we need Sabbath to lift up our eyes and look at the nature, look at the architecture, look at the art and gain perspective again. And then ponder, ponder your place. Ponder all that God's done again. Ponder what he will do. You know, when we wait, we consider what he has done. When we watch, we consider what he will yet do. And we just ponder all the great things God will do. I mean, think about that. You know how much time I spend pondering the bad things that might happen? Are you like me? I got in a conversation with someone earlier today. We're on a phone call and I'm like, well, we don't know for sure if that'll happen. So let's not make too many plans around something that hasn't even happened yet. This is something we're all concerned about, worked up and weary and fearful about. Hey, it hasn't even happened yet. How about we start to ponder all the great things that could happen? All the great things that will happen because he's faithful and he's true. That's what a Sabbath is for. And lastly, not only are we waiting and we're watching, this might come a surprise to you, it's also a washing. And what happens during the Sabbath? We start letting go and we start simplifying again. I know this may sound strange and funny to you, but one of my favorite practices as an act of worship is to give clothes away. Now that might seem funny to you and you might think to yourself, Judy, you have too many clothes, fair enough. One of the things I did recently, I'll have friends come over sometimes and I'll just say, I gotta clean out my closet and I'm just giving away clothes. Now, some of that is because I have a fair amount of clothes, but some of that is because it's good for my soul. I'm simplifying. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from this place of worship. I Greed, envy, Strife. So many of these things are, are rooted in this sensation that I don't have enough. And I got to keep what I have or my, my, I might have insufficiency. I, I might not have enough funds. I might ha have enough clothes. And this fear, it riddles us all over the world, doesn't it? And so we can't let anything go. But what the Sabbath does by waiting and watching, it begins to wash over us and we're washed again by his sufficiency, his supremacy, his lordship, his kingship, his leadership, his leading, his guiding, his directing. And I tell myself, I can let go. And sometimes that means letting go of things and stuff. Letting go and simplifying. What if we did something more than spring cleaning? What if we did weekly cleaning? What if we just, once a week, we just, okay, what else do I need to give away, simplify? What else do I need to let go? Let go. Here's what can happen for you. 
And one of the things the scripture of the Old Testament taught the Jewish people, as I've already referenced, is that they were to prepare. They were to prepare for the Sabbath. They were to prepare for, imagine if you got a big meeting you got to go to, you'd prepare for that meeting. You'd make sure you had the talking points. You'd make sure you had the details, the discussion items. You, you'd go to that meeting prepared. It's a big deal. It's a prepare. The Sabbath is a big deal. It can, it, it, can, it can yield incredible results and rewards in your life for your own soul. Prepare. Prepare for this day. And as you prepare to wait, as you prepare to watch, as you prepare to wash, as you prepare, you'll be even more effective in this incredible practice of worship. And I believe it'll bring so much more meaning to the other days, the other days. I end with this and I'm done. Where did the Sabbath come from? Well, it came from God, right? You're watching this and you're like, oh, well, Sabbath came from God. I know where it came from. It did. It did. To be very specific, in the creation account where God created the heavens and the earth, it says on the seventh day, God rested. That's interesting, isn't it? Why did he rest? Why did he rest? Some would say he, he rested. God doesn't need to rest, so why would God rest? It's interesting, isn't it? Because if I asked you, why, why do you rest? You'd say, well, because I need to. It's a fact. I, I need to rest for my brain, my body. I, I need sleep. We need sleep. God has built it into our hard hardwiring system, like our, our, our mechanisms, our systems, our computers, if you will, our wiring, our makeup. We, we actually cannot function. They say after just a few days without sleep, you, you, you start to go mad. You, you, you can't actually even function. So when people say, why do you rest? Our simple answer is like, it's almost insulting because I need to. But wait, the first person we ever seen see resting in the storybook is not Adam. It's not Eve, the first man, the first woman. It's, it's God. Why is God resting? Well, he, he did it as an example. Okay, we're getting closer. I like that. I like that. He did it as a model. If God rested, we should rest. Okay, but, but, but the Bible tells us his why. Are you ready for this? Do you know why God rested? Because he was done. He was finished. He was complete. With what? Creation. He was done. Hold on a second. The same reason God rests is why we should rest. God rests because he's finished the work. Do you know why we, we need to rest? Not out of need, but out of completion. Please hear what I'm saying now, because you may be watching this message and thinking to yourself, I don't really need rest. I feel great. I feel buoyant. I actually, COVID's got me in a great place. I don't need rest. My brain feels good. My soul feels good. My will feels good. My emotions feel good. I don't really need rest. I'll save this sermon for people who need rest. I don't need rest. I got stuff to do. I got places to go. I don't really need rest, Judah. I wish you'd preach a different sermon. I wish you'd send Hillsong Australia a different sermon because all of us in Australia, we don't need rest. We're actually energized. We have so much sunshine, right? Like we're, we, we feel great, Judah. Why the message on rest. I wish this was a message on purpose. I don't need rest. And that's why in so much of our Western civilizations, we don't listen to sermons on rest. We don't hear preachers preach on rest. We don't need rest. We don't see rest. We are a work oriented culture. It is about do, 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 get it done, perform success, resume, portfolio, background, body of work. Look what I've done. Am I important? I'm a big deal because I work. One of the greatest compliments you can receive in Western civilization is, oh man, he's a hard worker. And then preachers like me come along and they're like, rest! And the whole church goes, when? I don't need to. Oh, so you think rest is only when you need to. Well, then why did God rest? Because he had finished the work. Do you know why we rest? This will change everything for you. You will start to practice 
the act of worship known as rest or Sabbath, when you realize you rest because of completion, not need. Oh, you need it. God doesn't need it. You need it and I need it. Oh, for sure. But our motivation is the same motivation that God gave us. For one of the last things Jesus said on the cross is he hung between two thieves and he did for man what we could not do for ourselves and he became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. He paid for our righteous posture and position before God. He paid that for our friendship with God. He paid that we would be on good standing with God. He paid so that we would be complete and perfect and righteous and accepted and loved and have an unbroken communication and relationship with God. And he said on the cross, it is finished it's complete and so the ultimate motivation to practice the act of rest which is an act of worship is because it's finished it's complete sin air wrong selfishness has been complete in the person of Jesus and now the Sabbath rest is where we revel in that it's where we declare it's done, it's finished, it's complete. All of my posturing, all of my pivoting, all of my working, all of my efforts, all of my jobs, all of my to-do lists, it's all from the finished work of Jesus. It's from his approval. It's from his acceptance. It's from his shared righteousness. It's from that. Not for it, not to earn it, not to deserve it, not to warrant it, not to get God or garner God's attention so that he can see my diligence down here and actually bless my life. No! Rest is where we say, look at God! He made me righteous. Look at God! My life is accepted. Look at God! I'm approved. Look at God! I'm loved. Look at God! I'm blessed. Look at God! He put me in a family. I'm complete. I'm finished. God loves me. And nothing will change that. That's why we rest. And I'll leave you with that, church. And I heard you with that, church. Let me read into the record one more time. Psalms 121. Listen to this and let, it, let these words just wash over you about our great King and about our great God. Psalms 112. I don't think it was Psalms 112, but Psalms 121, there it is. <laughs> I mix up numbers. Listen to Psalms 121. Here it is. I look up to the mountains. Does my strength come from mountains? No. My strength comes from God. He made heaven and earth and the mountains. He won't let me stumble. My guardian God won't fall asleep. Not on my life. He is my guardian that never dozes off or sleeps. God is my guardian right at my side to protect me, shielding me from sunstroke and sheltering me from moonstroke. God guards me from every evil. He guards my very life. He guards me when I leave. He guards me when I come home. He guards me right now and he guards me always. So I am not the captain of my ship. I am not the leader of my own life. The great guardian of the ages, he is the most important person, the most powerful person in the universe. He guards me. He watches over me. Like that old wonderful nurse named Glenda who watched me while I sleep, so God will watch over you when you rest. But while you do nothing, while you rest and recall and remember and ponder and regain perspective, he works, he watches, and he weaves everything in a wonderful way. Oh, the wonder of rest. Jesus, I thank you so much for the minutes and moments we share. I thank you for what you're saying. I thank you for what you're showing us. And we thank you for your grace. If you're here today and you say, Judah, 
I would like to become a follower of Jesus. I would like to receive the free gift of forgiveness that only Jesus offers. I want to encourage you and invite you and welcome you to do that right now, wherever you are in the world, in your own bedroom, you're in a living room, you're in a condo, you're in a townhome, you're at a cafe, you're in a park, wherever you are watching this and engaging with this, if you would like to receive the free gift of forgiveness that only Jesus offers, just raise your hand with me. God, you see every hand and you see every heart. And I thank you so much that your forgiveness flows freely. And we rest in that. We rely on that. And we thank you, our past, present, future sins, totally and completely forgiven forever. If you made that decision, wherever you are in the world, if there's anything we can do for you, for those at Hillsong Church, Hillsong Church is prepared to help you, serve with you, stand with you here at Church Home. If you've made that decision on our app, you can download the Church Home app completely for free on the app. There's a feature called Pastor Chat. Pastor Chat is available to you right now as I'm speaking, and our team is available nearly 24-7. There are team members ready to talk with you, ready to pray with you, ready to listen, ready to cry, ready to laugh, whatever it is to help you in your journey with God. We love you, church. And I'm so excited about the rest of your life and all that is ahead. Beautiful. Wow. Can we really thank Amazing. Judah Smith? Yeah. Thank God for Judah and the gift he is to just the church globally. What a phenomenal Such an right. important message. Yeah. yeah. I think so real and I've, you know, I was noticing in the chat people, you know, really asking for prayer in their mental, mental and physical health and we'll, we'll do that. But, you know, Judah prayed a prayer there for people who wanted to accept Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, you know, if you responded to that uh, in the chat, in the Hillsong chat or YouTube or Facebook, wherever you find yourself, write something like, I prayed that prayer. It's the best prayer you'll ever pray, asking Him to be Lord and Saviour over your life. And a big, big congratulations for those of you who did. We have pastors, we have websites who wanna connect with you so we can help you get started on following this journey uh, of Jesus. So once again, come on, let's really congratulate everyone making yes. that decision. And Laura, just before you pray a prayer of benediction and we, we let you go, you know, I do wanna pray for people who are believing for, you know, they've got restlessness. Someone here again, can you please pray for me? So we'll do that for people maybe dealing with mental health. And Pastor Brian spoke a beautiful message later on. Why don't you go there if you haven't seen it? It's on YouTube right now. You can go back and revisit that message. And I'm gonna pray for you right now. Father, I pray God for people, Lord, who have restlessness, Lord, whether that be to do with their physical sleep or maybe just mentally, God, there's something going on chaotic internally, God. Lord, I pray that message would just seal the deal for them, God. Lord, give them rest. Lord, may they understand it's about worshipping and focusing on You, God. So settle the wind and the waves, God, internally. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' Name. Amen, amen, amen. Would you say amen with me? Amen. Amen, amen. Well, why don't we pray for people? Pray for them. Yes. It's gonna be an awesome week. Yes. Lord Jesus, we thank You so much for another wonderful day in church. And I thank You for Your people. I pray for them. I pray that they would have an amazing week full of Your glory and Your goodness. May You bless them indeed. In Jesus' Name, Amen. We love you, church. We'll see you next week. Tonight, church, we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful week ahead.